With four new rides, three themed lands, a multitude of restaurants and two luxury hotels, Fantasy Springs is one of the most anticipated Disney projects in recent memory. After six years and over two billion US dollars of development and construction, Tokyo Disney Sea is months away from unveiling this behemoth of an expansion to the public. But what's in store for guests? What should we expect upon opening? And do you even have a chance of getting into the land? Let's find out as we explore Tokyo Disney Sea's upcoming Fantasy Springs expansion. Set to open on the 6th of June 2024, as mentioned earlier, Fantasy Springs is composed of three mini lands themed around the stories of Peter Pan, Frozen, and Tangled, and is located at the very rear of Tokyo Disney Sea, in a place originally rumored to be home to a third gate called Tokyo Disney Sky. But that in itself could be a whole nother video. Entering the land via a newly created walkway between the Lost River Delta and the Arabian coast, you'll be greeted by impressive rock work that celebrates Disney's long-standing history with fantasy films, as well as introduce you to the three intellectual properties that make up the mini lands within. The story for the expansion is as follows. Once upon a time, there was a magical spring that contained fantastical spirits. It was said if you followed the water, you would be led to a world of Disney fantasy. This entrance area is the famed springs in question, and following under the rockwork, you are immediately in those worlds. On your right as you enter Fantasy Springs will be Rapunzel's Forest, where you'll be transported into the world of Tangled. The major draw in this area will be Rapunzel's Lantern Festival, the world's first Tangled ride. Aboard this five minute long boat ride, you will enjoy a romantic gondola tour following Rapunzel as she experiences her best day ever and meets Flynn Rider. You'll start outside riding past Rapunzel's tower before heading indoors and following the events of the film, all leading up to a spectacular finale where you'll be enveloped by the glow of countless lanterns filling the night sky during the annual Lantern Festival. Before that excitement makes you hungry, just next door you can grab a bite to eat at the Snuggly Duckling, recreating the famed Ruffian Tavern from the film. This counter service location will be the largest restaurant in the land, able to seat 620 guests at a time. Here you can chow down on the Duckling's Dream Burger or a sweet ever after dessert, served of course in a frying pan. Continuing around, you will be welcomed into the imposing Frozen Kingdom. Set after the gates have been flung open and you are invited to visit the Kingdom of Arendelle. The attraction within is another book report styled boat ride, here called Anna and Elsa's Frozen Journey. This will be a plussed up version of Frozen Ever After, where Grandpappy starts the ride by introducing the tale of Anna and Elsa to two young trolls bringing the sisters' memories back to life through his magic. Along the 6.5 minute journey, you will see famous scenes and hear famous songs from the first Frozen film, all culminating in Anna turning to ice in an attempt to save Elsa from Hans. Frozen Kingdom will also contain two food locations, including the Royal Banquet of Arendelle, a counter service restaurant set inside the castle where you can enjoy a celebratory banquet, as well as Oaken's OK Foods, a snack stand selling Yoohoo bread, a variation of the Scandinavian specialty, cardamom buns. After dining out on some OK food over at Frozen, we arrive at the final and largest addition to Fantasy Springs, known as Peter Pan's Neverland, which, if it wasn't obvious, is themed to the world of Peter Pan. Unlike the other lands at Fantasy Springs, which only have one ride for each franchise, Neverland is home to two brand new attractions, with the first being Heimlich's Choo Choo Tra- I mean, Fairy Tinkerbell's Busy Buggies. In this attraction, guests board a Busy Buggy, a vehicle made by Tinkerbell, and explore the Fairy Valley and its changing seasons. 
Upon entering the attraction, everything from flowers and mushrooms to painting utensils and pieces of nibbled cheese will appear bigger in size, leading guests to realize that they have shrunk down to the size of a fairy and entered their world. The attraction's boarding area is a delivery service location where guests board their busy buggy and help Tinkerbell deliver items throughout the fairy valley. Aboard this two-minute outdoor attraction, you will explore the valley during each of the four seasons, with the ride system designed to spin 360 degrees to ensure you get a great view of the action. The second attraction is probably the most mysterious in all of Fantasy Springs, simply known as Peter Pan's Neverland Adventure. This six minute long ride type ride, I'm not kidding, that's what the press release says, has guests join Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and the Lost Kids on an epic adventure through Neverland to rescue John from Captain Hook and his band of pirates. When Peter Pan informs guests that John has been kidnapped by Captain Hook and his pirate crew, they board a boat and set off on an adventure. Tinkerbell then sprinkles fairy dust on the boat, allowing guests to soar into the sky. During their journey, guests encounter Wendy, Michael, the mermaids, Tiger Lily, and other beloved characters from the film. On their travels, guests will discover Captain Hook's moored ship, the Jolly Roger, and look on as a battle with the pirates ensues. Despite all this information, we know very little about how this ride will actually work. Originally, there were rumors that it might be similar to Flight of Passage at Disney's Animal Kingdom, but we now believe it's more likely to use a ride system similar to Spider-Man and Transformers at Universal Studios. Whilst a trackless ride system is a strong bet for any modern Disney attraction, the fact that Peter Pan has a 102 centimeter height requirement is a good indication that this isn't a traditional trackless ride, as no other has ever had a height requirement before except for Rise of the Resistance, which, just like Spider-Man, has a 102 centimeter height requirement. Likewise, Imagineering has been working closely with Disney feature animation for certain aspects of the attraction, likely to be screen-based 3D portions, which is another indicator of this being similar to Universal Spider-Man. Obviously, we will find out more soon, but the fact they're being so secretive about this attraction leads us to believe and hope that there are big things in store. Outside of the attractions, this land is very similar to Disneyland Paris's Adventureland, where it surrounds a lake containing Skull Rock and Captain Hook's ship, the Jolly Roger. Tokyo Disney has provided little information about these additions, and it's unclear whether they'll be used for exploration in a similar vein to the Leonardo Challenge, or they'll instead be used for meet and greets or simply photo locations. Exploring Hook's pirate ship and Skull Rock is sure to leave you famished, and this section will contain two small-scale dining options. First is the 200-seat Lookout Cookout, where you can enjoy curry and, more importantly, chicken tenders. And secondly is a popcorn wagon, which will introduce a brand new flavor of popcorn to the resort, roast beef. Strangely, for such a large and impressive expansion, there will only be a single full-size store located within. Fantasy Springs gifts will be on the first floor of Tokyo Disney Sea's Fantasy Springs Hotel, which we'll talk about in a second, but the store will only be accessible from within the theme park. There looks to be some incredible items offered within, from snuggly duckling caps to Mickey and Minnie plush in some iconic costumes. Just be warned that guests at Tokyo Disney love their merchandise, so some or all things that you want may be sold out by the time you get the chance to go. A small wagon-style kiosk location called Springs Treasures will also be opened along the pathway from the Arabian coast leading towards this new area. Towering over the entire new land will be the Fantasy Springs Hotel, the second park-integrated hotel for Tokyo Disney Sea. This 475-room, five-star hotel will be split into two buildings the deluxe-type Fantasy Chateau, and the first luxury-type offerings at the resort in the Grand Chateau. The Fantasy Chateau has 419 rooms and starts at around 63,500 yen, which is around 430 US dollars per night, which is a very similar price to the Miracosta, 
the other park integrated hotel at Tokyo Disney Sea. The Grand Chateau is in a different ball game though. With only 56 rooms all featuring terrace balconies overlooking Tokyo Disney Sea, you'd guess these would be expensive. And boy are they. Rooms start at 300,000 yen, which is around 2300 US dollars per night. This is about the same price as the Galactic Star Cruiser was, with a whole lot less included. You do get some fast passes and show tickets for the park, but that price is a huge ask. Especially in Japan where a single night costs around half of the monthly average salary. Staying in any of the 475 rooms will also give you access to an exclusive entrance directly into Fantasy Springs and Tokyo Disney Sea, two in-hotel restaurants, as well as a lounge, all set to be exclusive to those staying at the hotel. Now, all of this sounds incredible, but it won't be as simple as purchasing a Disney Sea ticket and waltzing in on opening day. To even enter the land, you must have both your valid park ticket and a free standby pass or a paid Disney Premier Access ticket. Both of these will be available to guests on the Tokyo Disney Resort mobile app once they have scanned in and entered the park in the morning. Your best bet for guaranteeing entrance to the land is staying on site at either the Fantasy Springs Hotel or the Tokyo Disney Sea Miracosta both of which will give you happy 15 entry, allowing you into the park and to book ride reservations 15 minutes before other guests can. In the past for other popular attractions, Disney Premier Access tickets have been known to sell out before the park even officially opens during this happy 15 period. If you stay in the Fantasy Springs Hotel, this does allow you to buy a one-day passport Fantasy Springs Magic that gets you into the land whenever you want, as well as guaranteed premier access to all of the rides within, except for busy buggies, which will exclusively use the standby pass line. This ticket does come at a cost of around 2.5 times the price of a regular day ticket though, and you have to be staying at the expensive hotel. You can also do a vacation package that gets you the same ticket and more inclusions, including a hotel stay, but these prices fluctuate wildly depending on when you're going, what you want to do, and what hotel you want to stay at. Inside the land, also know that most of the food locations will offer Disney Mobile Order, allowing you to pre-book and purchase your food so it's ready and waiting for you when you arrive. As a consolation prize, if you can't make it into the land, a new exhibit celebrating Fantasy Springs is set to open in June at Ixpiari, the resort's version of Downtown Disney. It's amazing just how well Disney has been able to keep the specifics of each attraction a secret, despite almost six years of construction and development. With Tokyo Disney Sea regarded as the best theme park in the world by many guests, it's no surprise that people are excited about this expansion. It's also nice to see a land opening in recent times without compromise, where everything within is opening up all at once. Though considering the expected crowds, perhaps this won't be the best thing for each guest. We're extremely excited to see this land open, but if you're going within the first couple of months, then we leave you with one simple sentence. May the odds be ever in your favor. For review time, I'm Luke. Thanks for watching. If you like what we do here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like this video. And if you want to support us further, do check out our Patreon for exclusive content at patreon.com forward slash review time.